Yeah! Hey, come on, baby, come on! Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plant to boot up your system. Just do it! And for as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer, even if your hardware isn't prepared. And if you don't play that much, well, you can just use the hourly system for as little as 0.35 Canadian dollars. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. And well, if you are one of those people that follow my channel for the AMD driver videos, for example, or at least mostly for those videos, this is the video for you because today I bring you some very, very special drivers. And I'm saying special because these drivers are not yet available for the, the general public and these drivers cannot be found via Google search, okay? You have the link in the description of these drivers and these drivers are the 22.40.43.05 and as I say in all my videos, 22, 22 is not a year, 40 is also not, not a month, 43 is not... This doesn't make any sense because, uh, well, it makes sense. It just doesn't make as sense, as much sense as usual because these numbers are internal numbers, okay? This driver will most likely turn into the 23.4.1 uh, as soon as more fixes are added to this driver, okay? So for now, this is a special driver, especially for The Last of Us Part 1 PC port, uh, which improves considerably in some scenarios the performance of the AMD GPUs. So everything is equal or at least almost equal to the 22.3.2 drivers but with Last of Us optimizations and I did test those optimizations and I can tell you that even on the 6650 XT it works it has better FPS and it has it, it is it, <laughs> and it is also way smoother than before okay so it does work and for uh, higher end GPUs like for example the the, the 6800, the 7900 XT, 7900 XTX, the performance difference will be even bigger, okay? And I did not test those GPUs because loading the shaders on these, uh, th this game is just painful. I never saw such, such uh, amount of time took to load shaders in any game, so it's a pain in the ass. Now, as for the tips with this game, it's very important if you're playing The Last of Us and you're downloading these drivers to play The Last of Us. Some tips are, for example, for 8 GB VRAM GPUs or less, okay, or less, you want to go to the settings, you go to the world environment textures and decrease the textures to medium, okay? Overall performance um, will be much better and in terms of real quality you won't notice uh, any huge difference, okay? And if you have one of these GPUs that has only, for example, 8 PCI lane, like the RX 6600 series, so 6600, uh, 60, uh, 6600 XT, 6650 XT, uh, even the 6500 series or the 6400 series, if you have one of these GPUs, okay, you absolutely, you absolutely need to go, or at least you should go to the environment textures and decrease them to medium. As I said before, the performance will be overall much better and uh, the quality difference won't be that much. The second tip is to use FSR 2.2 because although I'm always against using upscalers, in this case FSR 2.2 in The Last of Us is actually pretty good. And I mean, it is pretty good, okay? The difference is rarely noticeable, even at 1440p, where FSR tends to be much, much worse than the LSS, which is at lower render resolutions. And in this case, FSR 2.2 actually makes a very, very good job, even upscaling from 1080p or below. So in this case, you, you saw upscaled uh, from 7280p to 1080p, and even there, the, um, the quality wasn't that bad compared to native. So, I mean, it's very well implemented, so if you need those extra frames, just use FSR 2.2 because you'll most likely be fine. This on quality mode, because if you run at 4K, even the balanced mode will be fine. The performance mode is just too low, but the performance, the balanced mode, sorry, will be fine. And the last tip is basically restart the game if your performance is degrading. So if your performance is degrading, it, it might actually mean um, that you, you can actually be running out of RAM or VRAM and as soon as you restart the game and boot it again, the performance will be much better, okay? I've seen this going from like, say, 60, 65 FPS to 80, 90 or even 100 FPS in this game with the 6650 XT and I knew something wasn't right because I, I was seeing the, um, 
the power draw of the 6650 XT at only around 90 watts when it usually consumes 120, 130, so I knew something was off. Restarted the game, went on once again, uh, the game restarted and I went from 65, around 65 to almost 100 FPS, so it makes a lot of difference. As for the attentions to have on this game, very, very important. Uh, well, this game will rape your processor. And I'm not joking, it will rape your processor at breakfast and it will do it again before going to bed just because it can. I never saw any game, any game using so much the CPU as this one. The Last of Us remake never saw. Even my 5600X just running around, let's say, 60, 65 FPS with the upscaling at 1440p, uh, with only a 6650 XT, it will be constantly over 85% usage. Constantly. And no, we're not loading the shaders, the shaders are fully loaded, the game is just a CPU hog, okay? It will bring your CPU down to its knees, and if you are having extremely, extremely um, high issues with this game, stutters and so on, it is mostly due to your disk, for, for example, having it on a on a very slow SATA, or having it, for example, SATA SSD, of course, or having it on an HDD, okay, or your processor isn't just great, so your CPU is just old, and it will suffer a lot, like I told you, even the 5600X will suffer a lot, so this game is a CPU hog, and it will rip your CPU at breakfast. And once again, once again before going to bed, just because it can. And it does the same to RAM and VRAM. I, I've seen constantly, I have 32 gigabytes of, of RAM on this system, and I've seen up to 15 gigabytes of allocation, 16, 17 sometimes, so I do know that this is not used RAM per se, and this is allocated RAM, which is different, which is different, sorry, uh, so it's kind of a, a stock a stocked RAM to be used when needed, but even in that scenario, uh, it's rare to see a game that allocates more than 12 gigabytes uh, when you're going for uh, at least a single player game, of course, when you're going when you're going to have like 32 gigabytes. So it not only pushes a lot the CPU, it also pushes a lot the VRAM, and it also pushes a lot the RAM, and it takes a huge amount of time to um, to load the shaders, okay? Over 20 minutes with my 7700X and over 40 minutes, 40 minutes with my 5600X um, with also 32 gigabytes of RAM. And when loading the shaders, the, the RAM allocation went up to almost 20 gigabytes, okay? So it's insane. Also, after loading the shaders, make sure to restart your game once again and then start it up because if you load the shaders and then start up the game, the performance will be lower than it should be, okay? Just, just a tip. So this game is basically a system hawk. RAM, VRAM and CPU power. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and see you in the next one, guys, which will be the 40 games for now at 1440p with the RTX 4080, okay? 40 games tested, one minute each, including also The Last of Us, Hogwarts Legacy that I downloaded on purpose to make that, that video, okay? So, thanks a lot for watching once again and see you in the next one. Let us through. You guys need to turn around and head back if you know what's good for you. Our beef isn't with you. We just want Robert. You don't want to do this. Turn the fuck around and leave now. I'm not going anywhere without Robert. Bitch, I will bash your skull unless you turn around and get your dumb ass out of here. Fuck this. Take cover! You ready? Yeah. I'm gonna fucking kill you! I'll cover you. Get the angle on him. 